So you've got your Sony ZV-E10 and want to start taking good photos. Well in this video we're going to go through the best settings for different types of photography and where on the camera you need to go to change them. So let's get straight into it. The first thing you'll need to do is to make sure you're in photography mode. This is changed by pressing the mode button on the top of the camera. This will cycle through movie, photography and slow and quick mode. This is important because some of the settings and function buttons change depending on which mode you are in. Now let's check the file format settings are set to the best quality. Press the menu button on the back of the camera and go to quality, image, size 1 menu and then file format. Here I personally use RAW and JPEG. This will save two copies of every photo that you take, one in RAW format and one in JPEG format. Raw images generally are larger files with more colour data stored. Be aware that they don't necessarily open in all editing software in comparison to JPEGs which will be much smaller, store less image information but will open with anything. These form smaller files are much easier to share online so if you're editing your shots in Lightroom or something similar you can go for JPEG and RAW because you'll be wanting to edit the RAW images to get the most picture information. However, if you're just doing quick edits and want to save space, then JPEGs are still pretty high quality, so I play with these settings and see which works best for you. Of course, there is a lot more to it than this, so for a more in-depth comparison between the two file formats, please check out this video here where I go through it a bit more. On the same menu, use JPEG quality extra fine and JPEG image size of L24M and the aspect ratio of 3 to 2. You can set these lower if you're desperate to save space, but memory cards aren't really that expensive. So I would always recommend the best quality is the best way to go. And with these particular settings, you're using as much as the camera's sensor as possible. Next, we're gonna have a look at shoot modes. And this is an important setting to get right depending on what type of photos you are taking. By pressing the center button on the back of the camera, you'll open up the shoot modes menu which will give you a quick, handy description of each mode. I'll go through some quick settings now for different types of photography. So for portraits, for example, I'd recommend using the aperture priority mode, which is the A option. This allows you to control the camera's aperture. This is represented by the F number at the bottom of the screen. A low F number will give you a brighter shot with out of focus backgrounds, which can help portraits look very professional by keeping the subject, the center of your image in focus and everything behind it out of focus. So a low F number here, such as F 1.4 or as low as your lens will go, will give you a more out of focus background. You change the aperture either by turning the function wheel or the larger wheel on the top of the camera's body. If you want all of your shots in focus, then adjust the aperture to a higher F number, which will slowly bring more of your shot in focus as you increase this number. This can be really handy for landscapes or any shot where you want much more of your composition in focus. A nice feature of the ZV-E10 is the background defocus button, which will quickly swap between out of focus and in focus backgrounds. So this is a quick way to swap to an out of focus background if you don't manually have time to change the aperture. Definitely a handy feature for photography with the ZV-E10. Next we're going to talk about the shutter priority shoot mode, which is the S option, which controls how quickly the camera will take a photo. This is an important setting for two main reasons. First, if you want to shoot a moving subject such as a person running and you don't want the photo to be blurry. And the second is to brighten or darken your shots. By increasing the shutter speed, the camera takes the photo quicker with less motion blur. But by doing this, there is less time for light to hit the sensor, so your image will be darker. Fast shutter speeds work well outdoors in good light, so can work well for capturing sports or wildlife without blurring. Whereas slow shutter speeds are useful when the light is low and especially if your subject isn't going to be moving as it lets more light onto the sensor when taking the photo. Just be aware that hand movements will shake the camera 
which is very noticeable when you're using slower shutter speeds. So that's some of the more important fundamentals which will help you take the majority of your shots or certainly have a good go at them. But now we'll talk through some of the settings on the function menu, which is the little FN button on the back of the camera. These are available in the menus as well, but this is the quickest way to get to them. So start by pressing the FN button on the back of the camera to access this menu. Drive mode is where you select single photo, timer or burst shooting. Burst shooting will take multiple shots as you hold down the shutter button. This is very useful when capturing a moving subject, such as sports or wildlife that we were talking about before, where you want to capture a certain point. Very useful when capturing a moving subject. The next important one is focus mode. This setting defines the autofocus behavior. As a quick rule, AFC, which is continuous, is used for photographing moving subjects. AFS, which is, means single shot, is best used when the subject is stationary. And AFA is automatic, is where the camera decides whether the subject is moving or not and tries to alternate between continuous and single shot more accordingly. Of course, it doesn't always get this right, so if you know exactly which type to use, then I would try and use AFC or AFS for different situations. And again, for an in-depth video about how this works, please check out this video I made on my channel. And for a load more videos about this and other cameras, please consider subscribing to the channel. The focus area setting, whilst this setting makes a difference, I'd recommend using these settings. Wide will focus automatically on a subject in all ranges of the image. A green frame is displayed around the area that is in focus. Really handy for just working out quickly if your subject is in focus and zone will automatically focus on the zone that you select by using the touch screen. This is handy, especially if you know that the point of interest in your shot is in, say, one of the corners of your composition. Of course, there is a lot more to it than this, but as a quick rule, you'll find that that's quite handy. If you'd like me to make a more in-depth video about focus modes, let me know in the comments. Exposure compensation basically helps you override automatic exposure adjustments your camera makes in situations with uneven light. Generally, I'd keep this to small adjustments here. I quite often leave this setting on minus 0.3, which helps fight overexposure without making your shots too dark. Just leaving this on zero is probably fine in a lot of situations, but if you are finding that things are over or underexposed, this is a nice quick setting to change to combat that. ISO controls the amount of artificial light that is added to your shots. Low ISO will give you a clearer but darker shot. Increasing the ISO will help brighten up your shots, but increases the amount of noise and grain. On the ZV-E10, generally, I find the auto setting works quite well here. It is sometimes useful to bump up that ISO in low light situations. The next one I'm going to go over really quickly is the soft skin effect. This softens skins for portraits and removes blemishes and marks, things like that. I'd highly recommend you turn this off and leave it off. Your shots will lose way too much detail and this is just a bit of a gimmick and yeah, just avoid, turn this off. Now the next option is white balance. This is a complicated subject. White balance is used to adjust colours to match the colour of the light source so that white objects should appear white. Generally, I do find the auto white balance is very good on this camera, so you're probably gonna be leaving it on that most of the time. But if you are noting that the whites are looking way off, so for example, they're looking too orange in bright sunlight, then you can use the preset settings here to help combat that. But 90, 95% of the time, I do find from the type of shooting that I do, auto will be fine. Creative styles allow you to control the finish of your image according to the scene or what your intention for the shot is. This can give you a good base finish for your JPEG photos. Be aware that it doesn't affect raw photos. This is almost like post-processing applied to your image. So you could go, if you're taking portraits, you could use portraits, for example, and landscape for landscape as just a good base. I don't think this is worth spending too much time on as all of these effects can be achieved in editing afterwards. But if you're not gonna be doing too much editing, then they may be worth playing around with. I've definitely found that the portrait one does look relatively sharp. 
and picture profile, honestly, I wouldn't use picture profiles for photography. While they can add a lot of dynamic range by using one of the options such as S-Log3, I really would recommend not using this for photos. Shooting in RAW will give you way more dynamic range in the highlights and shadows than any of these picture profiles. I'd save these just for video. And the last option here is just another way of accessing the shoot modes such as, such as shutter priority and aperture priority. So I appreciate that was a lot to take in, but by understanding these settings you will help enhance your photography. There is a lot more that I could have included, but this should be a start to get you confident with your ZV E10 for photography. Are there any settings that you use for photography with this camera that I haven't mentioned? Let me know in the comments below. But if you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. But until next time, see ya.